So, uh, first thing first, me and the brother Nashar overheard a young lady mm -hmm. talking about, you know, building a man and how it basically don't benefit them to build a man, but it benefits the next woman. Mm -hmm. So how do y'all feel about that? I mean, me personally, I, I you know, we talked about it a little bit off camera, but I agree with it. I agree with it. Um, and like I was kind of telling her, it all depends also too, you know, how you're helping this person, right? So if you're a woman that's giving him money, if you're a woman that's, uh, you know, providing all the essential things that he needs to uh, to accommodate what he's trying to do, then I don't think that, that that's necessarily the right way to go about it. I think that you should set up a person and give him the proper tools that he or may she needs to start their journey or their path. But as far as just giving them, giving them things so they can get to where they need to go, I don't think that that's necessarily the right way about doing it all the way. But, um, so I agree with the statement. So the people that be like, you know, let's say a brother coming out of jail, mm -hmm. he having a hard time. He got a record. Of course he got this idea. He want to start a business and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, a woman come in, she invest in him, you know, he make profit. He becoming successful in his business, stuff like that. So you don't think that, you know, a woman would be valuable in a situation to, like, you know, invest in that man and, you know, have him benefit. And as long as she take care of, you know, well, as long as he take care of her, you know what I'm saying, they work together. But let's say something didn't work out, yeah. you know, at the end. Mm -hmm. And he had to move on and continue that business with somebody else. You think anything wrong with that situation? That's a tough situation. I, I, I do believe communication is key. I, I do believe that, you know, throughout the whole duration of that process of him building himself, I think there needs to be constant communication, especially if a woman's privy to that. Because, right. you know, women know. They know. So I think if a woman knows what she's doing and understands, hey, that this can potentially not work out, she needs to be constantly asking him questions like, so, hey, so, you know, uh, not where do I see myself in this situation, but, hey, just ensuring that they're doing things together, that right. she's becoming a helpmate or helping in any way possible outside of, you know, just giving the, uh, the actual essential things that he needs, you know, whether it be money, credit, blah, blah, blah. But there just needs to be constant communication between the two. Constant. Right. And you're never really going to know fully. Gorilla, what's your input on it? You, you uh, we, we, we just got to be serious about certain things. Okay. Um, the reality is um, there's a lot of men out there that's looking for a starter girl. What I mean is they may not be in the position um, socioeconomically to get the type of woman that they want so they get the woman that they can get, not the woman that they want, mm. the woman that is actually available to them. And that woman then gives them their, their all, sometimes um, builds them up, gives them skills, uh, puts them on the right path. And then when they get to where they feel like they need to be at, man, they kick it to the curb and then they go get the girl they really wanted the whole time. Um, okay. So it's very... It's very risky, especially when you deal with somebody. You use the example of prison. You got guys that come out of prison. Oftentimes, they're going to just take whatever they get. Number one, they've been down, right? So they've been, you know, essentially limited or had zero access to women during that time, especially on a physical level. So any access to women that they can get, they're going to nurture and they're going to, you know, value for the time. A lot of times these guys get out of jail and they immediately start to switch up. The smart ones wait for the switch up until, you know, they get what they need to get and then, you know, they're able to advance themselves. Because a lot of brothers who go to prison, you know, at least the ones who are smart, take that time to really develop their plan for what they're going to do upon their release. And they get out and then they execute the plan. Um, and a woman is oftentimes necessary for that. But then what happens is, especially with, like, the preparations, the planning preparations, like, before I get out, I'm going to have as much stuff in order as I can, and she's going to be the one that's going to go do that legwork, that's going to go push the papers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Right? He's going to do his thing. He's going to get his money. And then now he's in a position to what? Not 
be stuck with her. The girl that he really is not all that into. She just was there and it made sense at the time. That's what a lot of people do. So is it risky? Do women benefit from building men? Sometimes. And they can benefit from building men. Um, but a lot of times, man, niggas just going to use you and move on to what they is really looking for. And they're going to use the skills and all the lessons that you taught them, all the game you gave them. Mm-hmm. And they're going to move on. Now, here's the thing. Uh, is that the worst thing in the world? Probably not. It don't have to be the worst thing in the world. You did something good for somebody. Man, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. Uh, it didn't work out. But realistically, I wouldn't advise anybody um, get themselves involved with nothing like that. Right. You know, I wouldn't advise that to no woman. No. To, now, to your point, they say the same thing in business. Don't lend or give out anything that you're not willing to lose. That you're not willing to you lose. You know what I'm saying? And, That's real. And, and, you know, if, I, if it, I'm lending money out... This money's probably not going to come back. And that's the thing, like, the starter girl, and we, we could take the prison out of it. Like, a lot of guys, they just get with the girl they can get with. You know what I'm saying? They might be 19, you know, fresh out of high school, or they in damn community college somewhere, and, you know, they got this thing with this girl, and she's, you know, an average girl or a slightly below average girl. And, you know, that's cool for a minute, and then they – begin to, you know, grow to new heights and broaden their horizons. And now they have above average women that they are, have accessible. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they begin to lose their interest in the woman that's been holding them down. Been there with them been building with them and growing with them from day one, you know, was shooting with them in the gym, so to speak. On some Derek Jackson shit. Derek Jackson is a prime example. (laughs) He left his starter girl because he got fame from caping and lying to the broads. He got fame from that. And, of course, with fame and clout comes what? Women. That's right. Point blank, period. Women are attracted to it. It is ingrained within the fabric of a woman to be attracted to status. Point blank, period. That is the natural order of the world. So, And that's in, we can see it in the animal kingdom. <laughs> it just is what it is. Women are attracted to status. Money is a part of it. But I'll say that status supersedes money in what women are attracted to. Mm-hmm. To prove that is, you ain't got to have money, but if you have a certain reputation, you're going to still have them. It's plenty of broke guys. They First off, there's too many girls talking about messing with broke dudes constantly to for money yeah. to be the driving yeah. force. <laughs> but some of these dudes got clout, they got status, they got a name, this ring, and et cetera, and that's actually what attracts them. So he got the clout off of YouTube from lying to the broads and then totally transgressed everything he told them mm-hmm. and got one and left his starter wife. He's a prime example of that. Right. And, and you know, that does go to the point where you say how perception supersedes reality. Perception supersedes you know reality. You I'm saying? They really don't be going after their money per se, but if they can look like it, they can go on the same trips, they can do all this stuff that you see on Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to go with it. But... Mm-hmm. For those women, you know, because I didn't got this a few times where a woman would say, dang, you know, it'd be certain things in a situation where we was in a relationship, but you did that better with that next girl than Mm -hmm. with me. But even that, though, because part of it is a woman building and part of it is a learning experience. I learned from our relationship, so when I got into my next relationship, I did it better. So that ain't even you building me. That's just me learning lessons from the mistakes that I made in my previous situation and not trying to carry that in, trying to prevent those problems in my next relationship. So we're we, we all supposed to learn from each other. I think that all of my previous relationships have taught me how to be a, a, a much better partner for a woman now for sure that's how it should be we're not growing and learning from our experiences why are we experiencing right. you know you would have some women say though right in that process let's just say the situation is going cool but then the man is just kind of forgetting about where he got his help from so should the man pour back into the relationship to help build what he's trying to acquire out of a woman as opposed to just jumping to the next chick uh yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, you you know our outlook on things. Um, you know, it's a lifetime commitment. So certainly, it's going to be twists and turns. It's going to be ups and downs in the situation. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you gotta 
looking to um pouring into the situation yeah. as well. You know, you know, you gotta put people in remembrance. Most high puts people in, all throughout the Bible, he's constantly putting you in remembrance. I am the Lord of I'm the Lord God. Of did you remember from Egypt? Don't you remember I did that? Seems he's constantly putting people in remembrance of the things that he did in order to build the nation of Israel, in order to, you know, establish us as a people. So um we take that note from him. And sometimes we got to put people in yeah. remembrance when they get to acting like they forgot, you know, they forgot where they came from. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. forgot who built them up. They forgot who was instrumental who in, in, in making them whoever they, whoever they think they are now that's got them feeling yeah. high minded. Yeah. If you were an intricate part of that, you got to put them in remembrance of that. For sure. And, and that kind of goes into what we were talking about today earlier, because you know, I think guys think sometimes it's easier or no, they think that they're growing in a sense as far as it's easier to move on to the next best thing. Mm -hmm. And I understand that concept. I really, I do. And it's the concept what the grass is always greener on the grass the other is side. always greener on the other and side. And that ain't always the case. That's a fact. Cause I'm going to tell you like this, the same shit that you was doing then nine times out of 10, you're going to carry it with you on your new venture. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really important for fellas to uh, self-analyze, self-clean, really think about the pros and cons of what's going on, you know what I'm saying, like moving forward, because there might be something that you did not do to fix that situation, and it could be what you want if you just do this just a little bit differently. Yeah. Like how many brothers right are out there self-cleaning themselves, though? Yeah, and, 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 the re and the reason, part of the reason for that is these you got certain brothers out there that's really not business minded. And what I mean is not that your relationship is a, is a business, but that your effort, your emotions and your time that you've spent on this relationship is an investment. Absolutely. So when you understand business and you understand the importance of investment mm -hmm. and you take a look at what you've invested, it makes you more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, not benefited. Um, it makes you, it makes you more obligated okay. to it. You feel a, more of an obligation because of your investment. I've invested. If I, if I you put a hundred thousand dollars into something, right? And let's say you're not a multimillionaire. Let's let's, let's say you are somebody and you have half a million liquid. You have five hundred thousand dollars liquid. You put in a hundred thousand dollars into an investment. Man, that's you're going to take that investment serious. Yeah, you're going to see that through until the very end because essentially 20% of all of that you have, mm -hmm. you've given to this. Mm -hmm. You're giving even more of that to a relationship. You're giving a lot of guys are giving more like 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Some they're giving 100% of themselves. And what I mean themselves is their time, emotion, everything yeah. Yeah. to this, right? If you analyze it like that, then you're going to try to see it through and you're going to exhaust all measures, all resources to maintain this thing, to make sure this thing su succeeds and you see it through because you understand how important, how substantial of an investment you made. That's right. But when you're not looking at it like that, That's you're right. looking at it like, man, this is just another broad, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever. Um, okay, and you just wasted how much of your time, yeah. how much of your effort, how much of your energy, how much of your emotion on that situation. That's correct. Yeah, just a waste. Right. When you're That's just right. ready to move on, and that sometimes some, some things are unsalvageable, mm -hmm. but when you're just so quick to move on, you're not even realizing you wasted That's all right. of that time. No, that's fact. I sat down, a little quick story real quick, but I sat down with, a, uh, with an individual who was just kind of like schooling me on some things. And he, he said something that was so profound, but um, he said that, because, you know, he, he was a businessman. Uh, you know, I don't know how much he was worth, but, you know, he had some M's underneath him, right? But they set up business meetings. Oh, my slot. God. Mm -hmm. They set up business meetings, right, initially before the business even starts to happen because, A, they're learning about the person, right? But then they start asking personal questions like, hey, are you married? Do you have kids? Do you have this, right? Do you have X, Y, and Z? You know, think the essential, I guess, things that they would think, Okay, this is this is a person that understands per community. But that's what people don't even understand. What on your application they're asking you about your education level. C correct. They're just seeing your ability to commit to something and be able to see it through and finish it. Absolutely. You so know? the the thing that really stood out to me was is that uh, on the second meeting, right mm -hmm. now it's like, okay, hey, bring your wife, maybe bring your kids, depending on where it is, because now 
this person who's probably potentially going in, in an investment with you or in business with you, long-term, especially long-term relationships, they're seeing how you treat your wife. They're seeing how you treat your kids, right? Because let's just say we go, out, we go on an all-boys trip, a golfing trip in their eyes, right? And maybe you want to hire some, just to be real, they want to hire some hookers. They want to hire some, some girls that are being called up. Mm-hmm. That's right. They looking at they looking at that. Hey, this guy is, in a, is unstable. At some point, he thought it was cool to drop his guard around us to where, you know, we can still continue to move forward. And that's not the case. Next thing you know, you get an email saying, you know what? Hey, I looked at everything after looking at all everything. Hey, we're just going to push on and move forward. Hey, hey good we, luck we're next not time. moving forward. We're not moving forward with this. So it just lets me know that, you know what, especially in the game of business, you always got to be careful about showing your hand and who you are. You got to know who you're dealing with. But even then, you'll never know. So yeah. you just better and, always be on point. And even with that, like, and this goes to something that Paul said in his epistle to Timothy when mm-hmm. he was, you know, having Timothy appoint different heads up over um, the churches. First Timothy 3 and 1, he said, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, people are going here and trying to, like, mandate monogamy with this Bible verse, totally ripping out of context. He's telling you this is the person that you need to look for. Does this person, if he's going to be in leadership, does he have a wife? Is he married, right? Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given a hospitality after tea. So he, he's talking about the interview process, the same thing that you're mm-hmm. talking about. You're looking for positive indicators about this individual. Again, is he married, right? Is he attentive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is he somebody who is a drunk, Mm-hmm. Right. How is his overall behavior? Is he hospitable? Mm-hmm. Does he like to teach? Right. Not given to wine. No strikers. This a dude that's constantly looking for conflict, violence. Yeah. Right. Not greedy and filthy lucres. This a dude who's money hungry. Right. Um, but patient, not a brawler, not covetousness. Then look, verse four, not covetous rather. Then it says, look, verse four, one that ruleth well his own house. How does he deal with his wife and children? See that? This is what Paul is saying. This is this is the guy for the job. And again, like you said, to this day, these are the same standards that are used in business. So, so uh, yo, it's a lock if I may, because I, I want you to continue. Sure. But bro, I'm so glad you brought that up because as you're talking about that, going back to the original question, what you thought? This is why the Bible is so essential for our women. Especially for Israelite women, because you know what? These are things that you can still look upon on yourself and still analyze for yourself. And you know what? You don't even have to be married to do this. This is called what? The courting stage, right? Yeah. Like, ask questions. Understand who you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. It, it will save you a lot of time, heartache, and, 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 and emotional just reckoning, right? Reckon if you just do these things. A lot of times, though, men ignore the standards that they put out. It's so, a fact. A lot, of, a lot of times you might have a standard. Like, I got a list. you see seen my list, right? Mm-hmm. You, 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 some of those things on that list, you kind of weigh out. Some mm-hmm. of the things are worth weighing out. Absolutely. You see what so, I'm saying? Some things are non-negotiable. Yeah. And some things could, like you said, if you got a list, how many points are on your list? Shit. Uh, damn near 20. 20 points. Let's call it, let's round it 20. Let's say it's 20 points and the girl is 14 out of 20. For sure. Okay. We're going to balance that out. The a, they, they, they're not always going to get an A, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, a strong B paper, that ain't bad, right? right. That's cool. You know, but if, if she's a 9 out of 20, man, come on. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. And a lot of men are too emotional to, you know, they, they want to rush into it. They mm-hmm. got that feeling. So they don't look at it logically mm-hmm. and, you know, go with what, you know, the most high set in their brain to continue with, to continue to, um, you know, court this woman or pursue this woman that you actually are looking for versus just settling. Mm-hmm. So uh, that leads me to my next question, because a lot of brothers, they might promise some things. They might make it in similar to the way I was uh, telling you earlier. Right. You know, a lot of men, they promise things or they compromise certain things that they don't need to compromise because they won't be able to fulfill their promises. Exactly. So what do you think? And I'm going to give you an example. Like for an example, you know how a man would be like, he's into polygyny, Mm -hmm. especially this, this, especially for these dudes in the truth, because a lot of women fall victim to this though. 
So instead of you being straight up and saying, look, I got, uh, you know, I'm interested in polygyny. So don't even ask about that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They might say, I'm not on that. Giving the woman an illusion of, okay, he's not looking for that. So there's a high chance that this is going to be a monogamous relationship. Exactly. So how do you feel or what advice can you give the men who actually struggle with just standing up for the things that they say they want to do, but, you know, compromise the things that they actually do? Uh, like this is his field right here. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, all you're doing is setting yourself up for failure in that regard, right? Because you're saying something like, you know, you, me, I have an advantage um, that some of y'all ain't got because some of y'all are starting at the ground level, meaning you don't have a, a wife at all. When you already have wives, this is this is that's the easiest thing to get past, right? And frankly, one no wife and one wife is difficult when you already are actively practicing polygyny it makes it much easier for women to accept because this is not a theory this is not a dream this is not an idea this is something that is an active lifestyle that you're participating in right so because of that that band-aid gets ripped off can get ripped off very fast when you find out very early on this is what i got going on this is before feelings get too deep or any of these things, so it's much easier to get past. There's no feeling of deceit, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So then we can just move on amicably, and you already know that, and it damn near ain't in your mind. We get it We get it out the way so fast, it, she's not even thinking about it, right? So it's really it's a great advantage for those of us who already have multiple wives. For every, If you have no wife, and you're meeting a woman, and polygyny is something that you are potentially interested in down the line. It, even if it's necessarily not, you don't want to close that door because you don't know what the most High has in store. You don't want to shut yourself off, and you don't want this woman to get this impression that you are going to, when, when, she, when she said, like you said, when she said what she said, she has a problem with it. And you say, well, I'm not really on that. She again is now thinking that she, you're, you're agreeing. You, you are consenting to monogamy, right? You're so conceding. You're conceding. So you are literally forfeiting your power in that instance, right? And what I mean by you're forfeiting your power is it is your choice as the man, as the leader of that situation, of your family, of your house, has been bestowed upon you by the most high. It is your choice as to whether or not what you're going to do at any given time. At any given time, your mind can change and the direction that you want to take that house in can shift at any time. The moment you concede to that, you've now conceded your power. Scriptures say what? Give not thy strength oh. unto women. Give not thy strength unto women. And what you've done is you've taken a part of your strength that's been given to you by the most high and you've conceded it to her to cater to her emotion in the moment. Mm -hmm. And you actually don't benefit from it because either one, your, your wings are clipped or two, you're just, when you take your power back, it's going to be a problem. She's going to feel betrayed. She's going to feel like you operated in dishonesty Rightfully so. and all of those yeah. things. Yeah, and that, nice. that's a big deal, especially to women when, men do that so you want to always move in truth in the, the radical and explosive truth because that's masculinity you see what i'm saying so um i would say brother just you 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 have to be assertive and you have to put your foot down and you have to let this woman know early on um you know dick drive this car and there's different ways to do that again you don't have to necessarily be abrasive about it. You don't have to be disrespectful about it. But there's ways in which she, you, you can get it, the point across to her 
that uh, dick drive this car, pussy don't drive this car. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the, and the reason why I use that example, like polygyny, is because that's really the biggest thing, especially in the Hebrew Israelite community. Mm -hmm. But along with you know you know our people yeah, in it's, general, it's spilling out into our people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That that is a huge thing because it's like now, you know, she got this mindset of okay, cool. So I already brought it to you that I got a problem with this lifestyle. So now I'm pursuing you based on what you said. And we are, are you know, courting, we learning each other. And I'm doing all of these things for you to prove to myself that I'm for you. And you proving yourself that you're for me. And what you just said is now putting you in a box. And that applies to other things too. Like brothers might be bounding themselves and saying, like for an example, let's say we got something to do Saturday, right? And you know this day is dedicated for a specific thing, but yet you are promising her that you're going to do this on a day that you know that you have a, a habit of doing this one thing. Mm -hmm. So the important thing that you said there is stop leaving things closed and leave it open. A lot of brothers that's around me, they might hear me say, hey, you know, well, t tell my wife, I think about it. See what I'm saying? Or just instantly say no and then do it later. You see what I'm saying? Like, no. And do it later But a lot of men They don't want to Like he said Put their foot down mm -hmm. And realize Like how, like the movie How high no, yeah. Dig <laughs> right this car yeah. Drive this car and Not it, pussy it, yeah. that, 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 it just gotta be established yeah. It's gotta be known Go ahead and, right. no, you go, and, and that's why Honestly You know A lot of brothers You know To y'all points They They don't need to be doing No damn polygyny Because they can't even handle one like you got, what, yeah. what did we say early on? You got to stay in your what? Stay in your lane. You got to stay in your lane. Like you got to really know yourself. You know what I'm saying? Really understand if you're not ready for that, don't even have that conversation. And if you are going to have that conversation, like, look, um, I'm not against it. I believe in it. I'm for it. At this time, I'm, my mind ain't really on that. You know, we But that's go, the problem yeah, right there. No. I, I, that I, little slip up right there is going to me, get see, you see, in see, that see, trouble. See, to me, to me, right, personally, it's not a slip up. To me, because I'm articulate. I know how to explain myself. I didn't say no. Hey, I believe in it wholeheartedly. I, 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 this is my culture. This is what I do. I mean, this is this is what I believe in. Do I necessarily need a second wife? No. But can things change? Absolutely. I, I address it literally just like that. Yeah. Okay. It, now, that's yeah, a little better. You know, no, no. And, and when you put that on it, there's nothing yeah, she can say. Right. There's nothing you can say. Because when the time comes, will things change? Absolutely. Right. I, I, I'm in the situation. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I'm saying it. I, I got a phone call. Uh, brothers call me. Brothers from Memphis. Right. You know, shout out to them brothers of the barbers. And uh, they called me. They had a sister on the phone. And she was just. Man, she was, she was, she, it was the polygyny topic. And, you know, she saying, you know, she understands and ah, it's just not for her. And I just asked, well, why? You know, why it's not for you? Um, and she said, you know, I just want to give my all 100% of me to my husband and I don't need nobody else. I said, but so what? Like, you said that. I don't understand how you can't give this man 100%. And he can't have another wife. I don't understand how those two things compute. Um, but a couple interesting things happened in that conversation. One, she said, and she she conceded to that if she married a man, and the man did say initially that he didn't have interest in polygyny, and then down the line he went and got a second wife, that she would just have to work with him through it. It is what it is. This is my husband. This is who the most high gave me. And... Um, we just going to have to deal with this, mm -hmm. right? So that was good because I didn't expect her to say that. I expected her to to, to to really get demonic, but she didn't. She said, hey, look, I got what I meant. That was my man, and he did that. Well, then we just going to have to deal with it. I'm not mm -hmm. going to leave is what she said, right? So also, though, she said, uh, she, she asked, what did she say? I talked about women um, being able to rest in their strength. You people say rest in their femininity. I said rest in their strength. And um, she said, well, you know, how does a woman rest in their strength? She said, how do you rest in your strength? And I asked her, I said, okay, so if you're good at something, right, um, it comes easy to you, then it doesn't feel like you're working when you do it. So it's like you're resting in your strength. Um, you know, and she said, well, what is that? 
what is that? Uh, uh, she, she, she asked, like, what does it do for me? You know, I explained certain things. And she said, well, how is that rest? If they're doing things for you, how is that rest? Mm-hmm. I said, well, I said, the Bible said they're supposed to be a pillar of rest. And she said, well, well, yeah, but that's not a pillar of rest. I said, but wait, what, what is, no, this is what she said. She said, it seems that you're telling me that they carry your weight. That's what she said. I said, well, what does a pillar do, ma'am? It, it carries weight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's what it does. And, you know, depending on who you are, right? depending on the size of the building, depends on how many pillars they're going to put in that goddamn building or what they call what now. Pillars is an ancient thing, and now in modern construction, they call it a support beam. Mm-hmm. Depending on the size of the structure, that means how many support beams the structure needs. It just Absolutely. That's just a fact. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if I'm a major structure, well, I'm going to need a lot of support. I'm right. going to need pillars of rest. Right. You need multiple. I'm going to need multiple. <laughs> Some people, it's not necessary. You see what I'm the saying? The structure it's, ain't that big. You know what I mean? You said the structure ain't that big, <laughs> so it might not need all that support. Mm-hmm. But a structure like mine, we, I need support here. Yeah, yeah, you like see what that. I'm saying? Like it, just, it just, it just is what, it, and that's just on the simplest biblical concept. But even then, like, I mean, that, that's a whole nother thing. I don't even want to get too, too deep on that. We just kind of just dealing with really the, the, the male aspect and brothers, um, just, just being firm on their rights over their selves and their family um, and not letting, because a lot of, a lot of women are not going to run from the, for the hills. Um, quiet as it's kept. A lot of women are not going to run for the hills over that. They may be upset. They may throw a fit, but a lot of them are just going to have to eventually get with the program. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of brothers will withhold that because they don't want to run her off. Not realizing that you're better off letting her know now, if it runs her off, then it does, but you're going to be in for a world of hell when you come talking about, here's my second wife. It's going to be hell then, you know, so um, you're better off just being a man about it and let your nuts hang, man, at the onset for sure. I, I got a quick question, right, while we're on the topic. So uh, I was talking to a young lady, and, and, and this is what she told me. She said, I'm not against polygyny, but this is what, I would want out of this. She says, if I'm going to be the, the pillar, right, as you, as you was put, if I'm going to be the pillar at home, I'm going to take care of the kids, I'm going to do all the cooking, I'm going to make sure the house is straight, you know, bills if need be, as far as, you know, me kind of like, you know, organizing the bills, but, you know, the man's paying for whatever. If I'm going to do, and the man gets to go out there and basically have any woman that he wants at any given point, then... I'm going to need this man to make a certain amount of money. And I just thought it was an interesting, you know, because she's willing, but at the same time, she needs a certain comfort with that too as well. I mean, I don't think there's nothing. uh, You see anything wrong with that? Nah, why would there be? Okay. I don't don't see nothing wrong with that. Um, Because I asked a few brothers, you know what they're, I didn't agree with them, but you know what they, you know what they said? What? They automatically went to, well, why are you letting the woman dictate that? I'm like, but this is before y'all get married. Yeah, she's like, she didn't dictate anything. <laughs> she, she, this is she, what she wants. She's got the standards like you do. Yeah, but but we can't frown on her for her thing the same way we shouldn't be frowned on. They shouldn't be frowned. And on. that was my point. Mm-hmm. We know the brothers, but I ain't gonna say it. that was my point, and mm-hmm. they couldn't understand that. And I'm like, bro, don't y'all understand? Like, all y'all brothers don't have nobody right now either, mind me. But yeah, you're trying to dictate something, and that, don't and don't get that money that yeah. you're talking about. Well, and, and, and no, but but and sometimes that would it be? <laughs> it be dudes who don't got the economic resources, mm-hmm. and they're upset that women have the standard of that. Bro. So now they're like, "No, nah, damn that! You shouldn't have no economic standard, bro." Listen, and, and they make remarks like. Oh, so what? She, all she cares about money? No, bro. She, she has a standard. She, she didn't say. She didn't say. All she cared about is money. But if it, if it's on the list, if she put it on the list, she could put it on the list. If 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 you're a man and you say, I don't want to date a girl that's broke, I don't want to date a girl from McDonald's, mm-hmm. that's fine. Mm-hmm. See, men, we usually just don't care oftentimes about women's economic standards that's like true. that. That's true. Because, because to us, it really doesn't. 
it, it's, it usually doesn't matter. Just dealing with the traditional sense, the men are the providers anyway. So we're not, we're not looking for the woman to have, right? But sometimes you meet a woman, you're like, damn, she got X, Y, and Z going. And she got, you know, that's it's like an added plus, mm-hmm. but it's never a deal breaker for yeah, us. Yeah. For women, it could be a deal breaker. Yeah, for a lot you of women. You see what I'm saying? It could be a deal breaker. And it, it, it really just depends. You got situations like um, Cardi and Offset, Jay-Z and Beyonce, where you have the woman who is a more of the bread earner of the situation than the man. But, of course, they're both rich. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They're all Both those couples are rich, so it, it really doesn't even matter yeah. who's making more. Yeah. They're both good, but the woman happens to bring more in in those situations. But let's come back down to reality, back down to where everybody else lives. Typically, the man is going to earn more, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that, that's, that's traditional. That's kind of the way it's been since the beginning of time. So to have an issue with a woman having that standard um, is nuts. And then you're telling me, again, like, think about this. So here it is. If if this is a woman and you're saying, all right, I got a wife and kids. I want you to be my next wife, right? But you, well, okay, you want her to be, what are you offering to this girl? What are the perks of the come? What is going to compel her to say yes I need to add myself to this situation. But brothers don't think like that. Brothers are thinking, I'm the leader. I'm the man. You have to sit to me, submit to me. You're my possession. I'm like, that's cool. I, I get it. No, it's biblical, but it don't necessarily. No, no, but, no but watch this, though. Who was mm-hmm. the greatest leader, arguably, mm-hmm. that historically the nation of Israel ever had? Who's the greatest leader? An argument can be made for, I would say, two. Is he a king? A king, yeah. Sol- Sol- Is he the David or? I would say Solomon, yeah, right? Sol- Especially David and, and, the, and the thing, the thing with Solomon is, of course, here's the thing. David and Solomon both had their pitfalls. Um, but we know Solomon as far as he brought us to an economic peak. Yeah. And he brought us peace all his days uh-huh. versus David that had war all his days, right? So, but what? With, with his greatness and his great wisdom came what? Great substance. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? He had great substance, and he had the most wives that we've ever seen documented for one person to have. He had great substance that came with that, right? So this, I'm the leader. Yeah, okay. And what? And to what level of leader are you? So what, so what do you feel about them niggas? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> men who be just settling, like, you know what I'm saying? As if... It's wrong to make some type of money. You see if, what I'm saying? If you're just settling, um, if you want to do that, that's up to you. It's not wrong to not settle. But also, if you are settling, but you want wives, yeah, plural. That's, that's I mean, that's look, that's look. there's women happen. that's going to come and get down with whatever. There's women that ain't got no problem being career women and working and contributing. Don't get that twisted. But here's the but to that, right? The average woman or or, or a lot of the women that you want, that's not what it is, bro. That's not how it's going. Your woman is a reflection of you. True. Your woman is a reflection of you. If if you got a bunch, (laughs) if if you're trash and you got got a a, a dozen trash bars, Well then, hey, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, that, that, that's the trash dump over there. Exactly. I feel it. <laughs> you exactly. know what I'm saying? I feel it. And, and you know, <sighs> and a lot of niggas, like, and a Go lot ahead. of niggas, they begin to kick back. It's because they got a girl that has some standard about herself, and they're they're applying themselves, mm-hmm. and the nigga ain't picking up his slack. Yeah, and he ain't picking up his work. So now the woman's getting on him. And what the Bible says that, right? A woman, if she maintain her husband, what is full of uh, anger. So right, turn about. Right, she's going to be upset because that's not how things are supposed to mm-hmm. be. Things are not supposed to be like that at all. Mm-hmm. So you've now upset the natural order of life, really. It's not even just a traditional standard. It is the natural order of life observable the world over throughout all of history, right? Throughout all the annals of time, so to speak, <clears throat> right? So... You've upset the natural order because now she's maintaining you. And now you over here talking about, man, these women, they all about money, man. Nah, you just not enough about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and you, like, what what's a girl's best friend? Diamonds. Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Ain't that something? Diamonds. 
which is a fucking illusion, might I add. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. But that's that tells you a lot about a woman. That a woman's best friend is a diamond. What's man's best friend? They usually say dog. dog. Uh, they say a dog. Yeah, well, right. okay, a dog. His friend. What's yeah. the what's the Hebrew word for dog? Kalab. Kalab, which means what? Uh, spy. Well, Caleb was a spy. Yeah. I mean, but what uh, what is Kalab? Kalab mean? Uh, it's slipping me right now. All your heart, okay. wholehearted. Because a dog, when he's with you, he gonna serve you with all his heart. So that's what that means. We looking for loyalty and dedication. They're looking for glitter. Right. That's cool. That's just what it is. That's just what it That's is. That's just what it is. Okay. They're mm-hmm. made like that. We're made like that. Yeah. Right. Now, if all they care about is glitter, well then fuck the bitch. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who cares about her? Right. Right? But they're going they all want some glitter though. Mm-hmm. Don't get that twisted. Mm-hmm. Right. They all are gonna want even the least materialistic girl, she's gonna want some glitter sometimes. Absolutely. Bro. And Absolutely. if you can't get that to her, nigga, you don't bother with her, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean right. it's it, it, Niggas got to stop trying to redefine, and, and this is what I hate. Mm-hmm. What I hate is <laughs> when things that I hate. <laughs> what I hate is when niggas start saying "modern woman," and they're describing how a woman has been observably throughout all of time. Right? There's nothing modern about a woman wanting a man who makes X amount of money. It's nothing right. modern yeah. at all about <laughs> yeah. that concept. That concept is very ancient, yeah. actually. It's the opposite yeah. of modern. What are we calling it yeah. modern for? Right. <laughs> and there was a That's versus crazy. traditional. Right? Versus it's, traditional. Yeah. This, that, that is the tradition. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. tradition has always been there. The yeah. tradition is in, in the most ancient, in the tribalist societies, man, hey, listen, you want, you hope you got a, a beautiful daughter and uh, you go marry her off to somebody who has the type of status and resources mm-hmm. that's going to be beneficial to her and, and, and as somebody who's able to take care of her throughout her life. Right. You and want your, if you got a daughter, do you want her to get with somebody who's not going to be able to provide for her throughout the rest of her life? But that shows you how modern men are far from the it, tradition. It, it's really the me- <laughs> the niggas is modern. The niggas are modern. The man is modern. The women is really not modern. Yeah. It's the men yeah. that's modern. Yeah, and then that leads me to the next point because like niggas gonna hate this one. Yeah, they, they gonna, gonna hate, hate this, this one for sure. They gonna hate this. Shit. That's and they better and, bite down. Yeah, and that's why I really couldn't get into these different podcasts where these <laughs> niggas just debate women's because it's like, bro. Y'all keep talking about this and that, but like y'all ain't traditional at all. Yeah, and it be the black men that can't even. The only niggas that's listening to you and following you is them six niggas. Mm-hmm. You cannot get a collective niggas to come and follow you mm-hmm. and do something positive. Yeah, but you know, do some keyword do something positive. Mm-hmm. Exactly, but traditional bashing women is bashing women on the internet is not positive. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. but traditional men in any nation at any time. Came together with their brothers and they actually accomplished things. They built things. Positivity built. Look at the thing. look at. Let's go back to West Africa, mm-hmm. right? Since yeah. we want to go. And, but for you, you said build things, and that's that brings me something. We said look at West Africa because we can look at everything that we built in West Africa. Here's something cold though. So you have uh, a a movement of black women on the internet called the divestment movement, right? For people who don't know what the divestors are, they are black women who say we are totally divesting from the black community. And we only care about like-minded black women. We will not date or mate with black men. We will not care about black issues. We only care about black women who are of our same philosophy. And they have a laundry list of reasons as to why they do that. Wow. One is what they say is black men don't build anything. That's what they're saying. Now, like you said, if we go back to West Africa, where we were taken from, we evidently built things, built amazing wonders of the world, culture, society, etc. That was built. But 2023, we could go back 100 years ago. Things were built. And people you say, well, we built this and they burnt. Okay. True. Right now, there's just a movement and all that's being built on is what tears the community down. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing actually being built. If what you're building is what tears it down, then you're not building it. You're just tearing it down. Mm-hmm. So you got, again, modern men um, who are just complaining, not fixing anything, no solutions, no, no accomplishments, no building, and that's lending credence to 
this new insane movement of women to say they just want nothing to do with the culture overall. For this weekend being Juneteenth weekend, you know, our brothers in San Diego taught within five minutes of them pulling off from the Juneteenth celebration, two people were shot. 20 people were shot at Chicago Juneteenth celebration. This is the this is supposed to be the black epicenter of the world right now, which is Atlanta, Georgia, we're mm-hmm. in. And Juneteenth, it was about birthday bash and freak Nick this weekend. There was not no Juneteenth talk in Atlanta this weekend. Mm-hmm. Everybody was talking about pool parties, people being women being ass naked and birthday bash and that's that's all that was going on. So that is summing up and epitomizing damn near what the culture is looking like right now, which is shaking ass, yep, um, promiscuity, and, you know, murder. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's what it is. Um, and you got movements of people on the Internet, guys on the Internet focus on the wrong things. All they're doing is complaining about how non-traditional a modern woman is, not realizing our tradition and how our people operate, niggas don't just sit around and do that. Niggas put in work, build things up, and actually give these, if you say you're a leader, what are you actually giving these women something to follow? Because a lot of these dudes out here talking, you could just take one look at them and go, bro, you're not a leader, though. You're not a leader. Cause like you said, you can't get nobody to follow you and do nothing positive. How are you a leader? What leadership qualities do you we have? We can't even ban Gucci. You, you, you see, we can't even like you, you. Why? You, some of these guys, I, I, they need to really ask themselves, why would a woman follow you? Exactly. I want to just go start asking some of these guys who, why would she? <laughs> what says leader about you, bro? Why would a woman stop what she's doing to listen to you and follow you and trust her life? in your hands when you exhibit not one quality of having the ability to do so. (laughs) And there's the self cleaning that we talking about right there. And that's the, that's the point that we was talking about earlier. Men, 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 but you know what? She, they're scared to even into have that thought. They don't want that thought to enter their brains. You know why? Because when you, the minute you ask yourself, you don't even have to say it out loud. The minute you ask yourself that now you got to really think about, I ain't shit. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. What is your life consist like? Somebody got like, what does your life consist of? Right. What are you doing with your life? And it's okay if it doesn't, but just know that you have to ask yourself in order to get better, because you may not have all the qualities that you're thinking about. And, and it's you okay. May, you may need to work on yourself. That's it. And that's fine too. Yeah, sure. Are you is. ready right now? Right. So, so there is a post on Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. That that's going viral. And the woman said, I be wanting y'all black men to get right so bad. We really be needing y'all. And then just to further the, you know, what she wanted to say. You know how on Twitter, you know, they'll have a post, but it, it won't fit. So they'll go to a comment yeah, under that. So, and kind of just keep it going. Yeah. So, boom, this was the continuation of their post. It's not about relationships. Okay. Keep even, thing. No, mm-hmm. even better. It's not about relationships. Keep mm-hmm. that, that, that. Let's that keep this in mind. Yeah. That bronze. It. Let's keep this in mind. It's about men coming together as a whole. You should want to see another black man or male becoming a better person. Mm. Nope. I I really hate how men take a positive and turn in into a negative. Mm-hmm. And then you got comments like, well. Y'all need to submit and do this and that in the that, third. What, Didn't she say it wasn't about yeah, relationships? Yeah, yeah, what should I take on weak men like that? Yeah, that that, that right there, and, and that and that that is an unfortunate reality of our experience right now. Is that the majority? I, I won't even say majority, but a loud demographic, a loud number of our people, our men will do that. As soon as criticism comes to them, they will immediately deflect it and try to place it on the women. You're not a fucking kid. That Adam gene. Right, that Adam gene, that, that, that past the buck gene. Mm-hmm. You're not a fucking kid that's looking at mom, right? Because that's the, that's the, a lot of you niggas, you still in a relationship with your mom and you don't even realize it, right? Where every time mom tells you why you ain't do your homework, you tell her, well, you man, dinner wasn't ready. We ain't talking about mom. You a grown ass man. A lot of you niggas is children. You have not matured 
mentally from adolescence. It hasn't happened. There was something that arrested your development during adolescence to where you cannot actually mature into adulthood. That's evident. So here now, every time somebody has criticisms on you, your response is an immediate deflection, not actual self evaluation, mm -hmm. not self inventory, mm -hmm. right? Not taking time to look at yourself and analyze yourself and say, okay, what can I do to better it? Let me analyze the truth in this comment. A lot of y'all can't bite down on criticism. Mm -hmm. That's about the first man of money I ever did. I said, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to listen to this whole 20 something minute video and we ain't going to say a goddamn thing about it. We all just going to, we, we all are going to have to sit here and listen to this. Mm -hmm. This was a black woman with statistics, with article, with all type of, and we're going to have to listen to all of her criticisms for almost a half an hour and, and, and digest it before we yep. begin to respond to it. That's right. What is she saying? Is there credence to what the woman That's is right. saying? That's Does right. she have a point? Mm -hmm. Should we maybe work on something? I said, and the coldest thing about it is all the complaints that she made, I don't fit a goddamn one of them, but I'm still going to sit through all of it and listen to it and respect and value her opinion as a black woman, mm -hmm. right, as my sister, mm -hmm. and then also then discuss it with other brothers. As right? a woman in need, as she's made originally. Mm -hmm. as a, she, she, made, that, she made it public. That woman said, uh, we, yeah. we, we are in need of this, and there's just not that. Oh, well, y'all ain't being submissive. I, I, submissive to what? Submissive exactly. to what? Who exactly. is she supposed yeah. to be submitting to? You? Yeah. Somebody who can't even take criticism? You're supposed to be submitting to you? You, you have not given this woman a goddamn thing to submit to. You're a joke, sir. Those are leadership qualities, <laughs> yeah. too, by the way. Yeah, what she submit, like, <laughs> and, and, and this is another thing I'm saying, like, a lot of us do not have these problems. Like, this, this, this submissive problem, right, that a lot of uh, guys are complaining about, bro, niggas ain't having them problems, bro. I'm not having them problems that you're having, sir. You know why? Because we actually do things that demonstrate that make it number one let's just before we even say that let's just go into nature right this is a natural process that's occurring because when you observe your natural masculine traits and qualities when you embody those things then guess what naturally she's going to embody her femininity and the submission is going to happen that's that don't facts. that doesn't mean that everything is going to be picture goddamn perfect all the time it doesn't mean there's not going to be disagreements it don't mean there's not going to be arguments but the natural order and pace of the relationship mm -hmm. is going to be you're in the lead and she's submitting but when you don't have them qualities, when you're not functioning as a man, you're going to consistently have submission issues mm -hmm. consistently, right? Because you don't even realize the natural balance of life is thrown off because you're a bitch. <laughs> Basically, Straight like take that, that to the you, bank. Straight and cash, when you look homie. at a lot of these niggas, they be soft as hell. They appearance be even soft as hell. Like when you look at these brothers on this uh, podcast, I forget the podcast, but it's white men on there now complaining about how, you know, so American women ain't it. Mm -hmm. But they all in these extra capris ass pants, suit tight as hell, you know what I'm saying, chest out, just looking gay, no no facial hair, you know what I'm saying, just looking real soft. I don't soft. know about the facial hair part, but, you know, they be looking clean sometimes. But, you know, yeah, I, you know. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, but see, but, but even, even that thing, even the facial hair thing. Yeah, that's a big These thing. women are that's naturally attracted to beards. Yeah. There's something, that's people, bad. people are taking for granted nature and, how things have always been throughout life. If you go to ancient Egypt, them niggas were gluing fake beards on their face. That's how important that they understood the symbol of a beard was, but they, them, they genetically didn't have the ability to grow it, right? Because, you know, you got certain people who they, they don't grow facial hair, certain, you know, ethnic groups. Those people in Egypt was not really growing beards. Mm -hmm. So they went and made a fake beard and put it on they damn self. That's crazy. <laughs> because they was interacting with the people to the east of them. You know, the people in, in Sumer. And, man, they was wearing beards in Sumer. They was wearing beards in Assyria. And there was noblemen, and, and they were great hunters and things like that. So when they interacted with that, they said, man, we got to do we something gotta get about down that. With that. We got to get down with that. We got to get down with that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they, they adopted that part of the culture. You know, mm -hmm. just like when you go and you interact when different people interact and they see something 
admirable to see something they like about the other people. They may go take that home to theirs. That reminds me of when niggas uh, seen that Pooh Shiesty had a full beard. Mm-hmm. You know, he coming from, you know, vi- music videos. I'm talking about all he with, got. With a, the mask on. Nah, but oh. all he got is a, a, a mustache and a motherfucking, like it basically was goatee. goatee. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. Them folks seen them with the full beard. You see all the women coming. Yeah. That's what they like. They like, oh, no, you can't come out and cut that. You see what I'm saying? One of the things that we were talking about outside earlier, uh, Nakamaya and I on the patio, is also, too, which which we know, but we'll just bring it up because we on here and people got to know That's right. even more. There's no fathers out there. Being fathers, yeah, that's a whole nother. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I, I don't really want to. No, we get can into go. It. I mean, we, we can do it. We oh, can do. It. I'm just I, saying. I got plenty but, for but, that. But, but, but we understand. I got plenty of questions for that. We understand what happens. Just the, 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 the wave of just bad things that can happen when you don't have a father in your life. You know, I didn't have a father in my life early on. I had him later on in my life, but I still to this day recognize. Mm-hmm that I'm lacking some things when it comes to a spouse, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I needed to see. Yeah. Not even so much to do, right, because I know you can agree to this, and, and you will know, when I saw certain things, I naturally, okay, that looks right. Yeah. That, that looks like I see mom is happy, dad is doing this, he brought her flowers, I don't really understand it, but she has a smile on her face, they're hugging each other. Mm-hmm. That seems like it's right. <laughs> that seems like for some reason yeah. that works. Like you said, that's just nature, right? It's just common sense. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see that. So no. what happens in turn, I'm treating women differently. Yeah. The way I'm not supposed to at, at my early adult ages. I'm doing whatever I'm doing, but I'm lacking in something clearly, and it shows up in my relationship. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's one of the main places... It's gonna show up. Is in relationships. It's gonna show up really in all aspects of life, but it but it definitely is very present in relationships. Right. Mm-hmm. And and the thing with that is, what's the uh, scientific term you use when you have to come come to a conclusion, bring statistics and stuff like that? I think I have my own scientific experiment with this. Well, like a theory. Like a, the- a there theory. There you go. A there scientific you go. theory. A theory, right? This is my theory on this because we know theories aren't exact. Mm-hmm. Some They're just theories. Yeah, know? yeah. Some it could some, work, it could not work. some theories we can live cool. by because of the statistics behind it. You mm-hmm. got outliers, but based on these statistics and what we're proving is that the majority the majority does this. That's just how psychology works, mm-hmm. right? So when we're looking at how dudes make certain decisions in life, I come to find out that the majority of their problem is the lack of identity from their father. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I've been noticing, even finding somebody that I can, you know, uh, get things to do, like like take care of things mm-hmm. without being emotional, without doing all these things, or without, you know, uh, second guessing things. Like, for an example, Tazayim had his father, everything else. But the other people that I interacted with, I'm noticing, nigga, y'all had major daddy issues. You see what I'm saying? And you're looking for your father and other niggas. Mm hmm. You looking for your father and your friend. Mm -hmm. I don't owe you that loyalty that your father was supposed to give you. Mm -hmm. And that's the major problem with a lot of especially black men, even the ones who knew their father, but he just probably like he lived with his mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's all you say. No, he wasn't there to interact or any in and out of jail. I come to find out that a lot of men, based on their decision making, is because that Lack of identity You gotta think about A man like me I know My father There's nobody That's a deadbeat In my family So I, it's not even A thing mm-hmm. Exactly This is literally Brand new Because it's somebody That's brand new mm-hmm. with, with brand new children God. Mm-hmm. So Growing up I always seen Men Taking care of their kids yeah, exactly. Regardless of how The relationship went mm-hmm. Regardless if there was a split That man was there mm-hmm. Right and I got the luxury of seeing my grandparents do the same thing. So I, I, all my grandparents are still living. So I got a huge advantage over a lot of people mm-hmm. based on me seeing my... Seeing functional relationships. From, mm-hmm. I'm talking about functional even to my great-grandparents. Uh-huh. I met almost all of my great-grandparents. Except I don't know my grandfather on my mom's side. Mm-hmm. My great-grandfather on my mom's side. But all of my, my, my dad's dad, uh, my, my granddad's dad, I met him. Mm-hmm. I met his wife. My same thing with the opposite side. I met her. I met the wife. 
I mean, I met him. I met the wife. So even my great great grandmama, she was able to tell me all the stories and how she had to protect my great grandmother from certain slave interactions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because this was around the time it was, you know, so called quote unquote freeing, mm -hmm. but she came straight off the plantation for okay. real. Mm -hmm. So when I'm looking at different aspects of decision making of these men, it's a lot due to the abandonment of the fathers or, you know, somebody dying too soon or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what's y'all take on that? <sighs> yeah, I mean, wow. yeah, nah, like, it, it's people don't understand how important that is, a father in the house, um, how detrimental it could be, uh, how taken for granted it could be as well. But it, it's crazy to me how anybody could take it for granted because it's such a, a consistent talking point. How many people say, man, there are so many people that I've met and we and who have literally said, if I had my father in my life, I would have turned out better. I've heard that. I'm, it's 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 cliche. That's how much it gets heard. It became cliche to just say, you know, daddy issues. Um, you know, similar to you, I am my father. I don't got no deadbeats in my family. <laughs> Going all the way back to Haiti, generations. There's no, we don't know anything about fathers not raising kids and taking care of their kids. We have no clue about that in my family. So, but you know. <laughs> I come from communities where my friends knew about that. You see what I'm saying? Or, you know, my friends pop, he's doing, you know, my best friend growing up, his dad was doing some serious time on a manslaughter case. You see what I'm saying? So his pops was going for a while. So I seen different dynamics, um, different situations. So I understood all the situations. But when we get to a place in our intelligence and our emotional maturity and we could take a look at people who did not have a father, Versus people who did, and this even work women as well. It has an effect on them as well. We can see that there's a a, a, a deficit. There, there's there's a deficit there in a lot of things, especially emotionally, um, from not having a father. There's a very observable deficit in people who had a father versus people who didn't. And and an example is like, for an example, I was talking to my son's mom the other day. Prior to him coming with us this weekend. Mm -hmm. She would complain and say, man, just watch how they act. And I keep telling her, look, I do not be having those problems. Ever. And when I'm noticing it, I'm just, you know, dealing with them. They might do something, but they snap right back into That's reality. Right. Like, I'm not going to do that. Dad's here. Exactly. Just me being here is keeping them in control. Mm -hmm. But when I'm FaceTiming her and I'm telling her, look, just go ahead and whoop his ass. You know what I'm saying? Because the woman don't want to do that. And she feel like, like, even her explaining it. And this is why y'all men got to step up and be in your ch child, fight fight to be in your kids' lives. That's right. Um, when she called me, she was like, I don't want to have to do that. I, I don't want to keep, keep getting aggressive with them. I don't want to do this. But because I'm not there and we have to co-parent, she has to do these things. Mm -hmm. And this is why we should... Fix relationships as well You see what I'm saying mm -hmm, what Like you were saying earlier mm -hmm. Because that can Avoid a lot of things Yeah But just me being Here Just just being there mm -hmm. Like I tried to uh, She tried to get them To go to bed Just the other day Just prior to Them coming here And they just Flipping Doing all types of stuff I get on the phone Hey y'all get your ass to bed I'm on the phone mm -hmm. He's acting right Yeah Another situation I go Uh he had an incident where my son had smacked the kid at daycare. Mm -hmm. And I literally told the instructor, threatened to call his dad. Mm -hmm. And we never heard not one thing happen again yeah. with him. And that's just the importance of just yeah. being the dad, being there. That's, right. that's the same fear we mm -hmm. had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When, when dad came in, all right, we, we, yeah. we chilling out. That's fact. I, I have to say this because it's so important. And, you know, we all would understand this because we're all fathers. We all have, you know, sons especially because I want to highlight the sons. We're growing up in a day and age now where it's getting harder and harder to raise your kid. Why? Because think about it, right? Typically in a normal household, you got the mom and the dad who's working, right? And then who else is raising your kids right now? You got school, mm -hmm. you got TV, and then you got the internet. Yeah. A majority of the time. And the way, that, the way that they're displaying and pushing out different type of contents and topics, it's crazy. 
And these kids are learning quick. Ain't no more going outside anymore, right? And just going playing with Jimmy down the street and thinking shit going to be cool. Because now, these days, you got to worry about your child, your daughter, even really your son being taken. Mm-hmm. So now you really got to be with your children damn near all the way up into high school, right? Just to make sure the security is okay. Right. But what I'm trying to get at is that for the moms out there, especially the ones that are going on and on about how, you know, they're keeping their sons away from their fathers. Let me tell you something. Do you understand that we are fighting a different monster in 2023? We're fighting a different monster in 2023, man. Like, now these people are preying on our children, especially black children, right? Thinking that they can change certain things that makes them that makes us great. That takes away our identity and and you know whatever else we got, right? But and it's literally killing our culture to the point to where like we're really losing sight of who we are. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, 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 my bad, but it, it's just it's these women don't have an idea of what's really going on. So to your point, and I agree, you have to discipline your children. Right. You have to get on your children. Your wife needs to get on this man because you know what? It's going to make him a stronger person because we have to raise these kids differently to prepare them for a world that we weren't even really ready for. We just had to, thank God we're old enough to adapt to this shit. Mm -hmm. And we got the knowledge because, you know, we 83 babies for the most part, right? At least me and this guy, right? I'm 1990. (laughs) We ride on the cusp. (laughs) (laughs) Don't try to to boost my guy. I I grew up with the 80s. I just divulged my 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 age a little bit. I grew up with the 80s. Yeah. But you understand, though. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's so different. Like, we got a lot of the old school ways, but we still got a lot of the yeah, new nah. schools. And we nah, can cause adapt. Because we, we remember so much. Yeah. We remember a lot of old stuff, but we were young enough when the new stuff came out. Yeah. It's regular to us, too. Like, a Absolutely. phone is not crazy to us. The computer, things like that. But to some people that's before us, phew. Some of them, like man, ways. they got left. They got left in the Stone Age. Yeah. Not all of them, but some of them definitely yeah. got left in the Stone that's Age right. for sure. But that, like that's why TV even exists still. Like cable TV, mm-hmm. cable TV only exists still because you got people who have not adapted to what's going on. So they still are gonna. They need the TV. You got mm-hmm. grandparents out there that bro, mm-hmm. they gonna watch when the show come on at this time. We not thinking about what time the show come on. You we see just that thinking going about point? what. It's a cable, like cable, like cable TV, like how we used to see it, blockchain, boom, 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 like this is coming. I, I, I don't think it's going to ever disappear, but I mean, it's dwindled. It, it damn near doesn't, like soon enough, I'm going to put it to you like this. Once every, every major sporting uh, league in America signs a streaming deal, once they do it like how the NFL did with, with on, yeah. on Amazon, yeah. once every... Once the NBA, I think MLB just did one. Once everybody gets that locked in, TV's gonna that that's almost gonna be the fatal blow for TV because the only thing that you really need on TV is sports. That's the only thing that that's true. that, that that's is true. is is anchoring TV right. is live sports. Right. So TV shows are gonna go away. No TV show. Why would TV shows ever uh, well, go away? T- t- not not well not they're, TV. They're, show. they're on streamers. TV is never going to go. Shows and all that's never going to go anywhere. It's just, it's, you watch it on it's just a shot streaming different. platform. Yeah, it's just shot different. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's shot, it's shot the same, though. Yeah, yeah like, like Bad Girls way. Club is on that, uh, uh, Tube, what, what is it? Tubi. Tubi. All this stuff, it's all, everything's going to exist the way it exists. And it's rerun. But it's just going to be, you're just going to go on the streamer. You had something? No, so you made cable, because you said, you said, uh, sports was keeping TV alive, but it just keeping cable. It keeping ca- that's what I mean. Cable TV, mm-hmm. broadcast, and cable TV. That's what's keeping alive. Knowing that in order to watch the finals, I got to go tune into ABC. Right, the moment that all of that is done, or or there's a primary like again with 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 Prime, with the NFL and different. Once they lock that in, I think the NBA's contracts for their TV is next year. Mm-hmm. Once all that's squared away, it's going to be a, a real death blow for TV, and it's really only going to be old people. Because think about it. I mean, I know I don't have cable. Do you have cable? Mm-mm. Do you have cable? Nope. Do you, we don't have cable. I have 
Prime, I have Netflix, I have Hulu, I have Paramount that's Plus, right. I have Zeus, I have Now That's TV, I have um, Stars. I got all that, and whatever I want to watch is there. That's where I'm consuming content, and of course, YouTube. You see what I'm saying? That's where we consuming content at. So we're not, t- but you know, TV as as big and as great as it was, it was limiting. Yeah, yeah. very. We were very limited on TV, and we're now we're. We're unlimited, you know. So why would we? Why would we limit ourselves? The reason why I said TV shows, because I mean, obviously there's some cool TV shows out there, but reality TV is like where it's at, and it has been for a while now. No, hell no. No, you don't think so? Rea- yeah, reality yeah, TV is damn near died. I don't like it. Reality TV is damn near died. Really? What reality shows are there? I'm just saying, you got things like you know the Bad Girls Club and all that. Other Bad Girls yeah, Club ain't been, been out in years. Okay, well, and, but but th- those are niche things, but those aren't dominate. What what dominates is dramas. Dramas are what dominates. Right? Okay. Everybody watches those. What is what is power? It's a drama. That's a, yeah, that's a drama. That's unique drama. though. Power's, you see what I'm power's, power's good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, but that's a dra- dra- yeah. dramas are what what dominate. Like naked and afraid. You have remember the fear factor. Like mm. things like I mean those are TV. They looking at Mr. Beast now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can look on Mr. Beast on YouTube. You see what I'm saying? And there's there's still a market for that, but that's not what's dominating. Mm-hmm. What's dominating the drama dramas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Dramas is what what dominates and and sports. Mm-hmm. Dramas and sports. That's what people things people can really get into and sports. There's you know, so stuff like that, but it's just gonna exist on on the streamers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? On the stream platform, on Netflix, on Hulu, on stuff like that. There there will be. You know what I'm saying? So they might still be on TV, mm-hmm. you know, um, because the TV stations are going to exist because there's there's still millions of dollars to be made there. Yeah, but where the money's really getting made at, bro, is on streaming. That's right. You know how many you know how many subscribers Netflix has? Um, how much? A quarter billion. Prime That's crazy. On two hundred million. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, bro? It's crazy, bro. You do you have, do you have YouTube TV? No. Bro, you know how much YouTube TV is? It just went up like ten, fifteen dollars. Yeah. Too. I was paying. Huh? I was paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought it was like thirteen ninety nine a month. No, YouTube that's, TV. No, that's YouTube Premium. Oh, no. YouTube TV is where, like, you, where you get the channels. Ten, you get everything. That's crazy. It's sixty. I got it. It's sixty four. It was sixty four, but now they're going up to like basically seventy five dollars now a month. Yeah, right. That basically is my cable right there. YouTube yeah, TV. You basically that, got that, cable, that's yeah. my cable right yeah. there. And I love YouTube, so I'm gonna pay for it anyway. I love watching YouTube on my phone. I feel you. You know what I mean. You got you got certain advantage, but you know what? Like I said, once they once they close them big deals out with the streamers, and they're able to move sports to the streamers, mm-hmm. bro. TV, bro. Good luck. Good luck. You, it's gonna be only old people who <laughs> who have regular cable TV, bro. Yeah, and it pretty much only is now. Just to be real. It's an old people thing. And that's another thing, too. Our old people. You know, our people banding together and taking care of the elderly like we supposed to. <laughs> Forget about that. Niggas yeah. robbing old people. Yeah, niggas yeah. Ro- Bro, niggas j- j- right down the street from where I was just living at, Mill Branch, Kill Branch, they had the Orion. Mm-hmm. And lady literally at the uh, ATM, young man just come and rob her at gunpoint. See that? It, it all, and, and for what? You came and robbed her at gunpoint for what? To go spin on some little duck ass hoe? Or something stupid. This is what I'm talking about. So so going back to the post, when the woman say what she say, she, you know, we be needing y'all. This what we talking about. Who's there to intervene in that? Who's there to intervene and stop that? Why does he think he can just do that to an old lady? Because don't nobody care. 